Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. An alarmingly number of people I talk to when I first ask about people's stories growing up report experiencing some sort of abuse. And I know this is a little heavier topic than usual, but I feel like it's so important. And and here's the thing. A lot of people have experienced some type of abuse in their life. And maybe it's you or maybe it's someone you know. And it could be someone you're dating. I found some statistics that were astounding to me. One in nine girls and one in 53 boys under the age 18 will experience some sort of abuse by an adult. And this could be any form. It could be physical, emotional, financial, sexual, coercive, psychological, and it really can leave long-term scars. And it's no surprise that these scars can flare up again when you're dating or beginning in a new relationship. So no matter how different this new relationship or new dating experiences might be, it's totally normal to be weary and you could find it difficult to place trust in dating and in a new partner. The trauma of experiencing abuse can take a long time to recover from and survivors need time to rebuild their confidence, self-esteem and the ability to trust. And here's the thing that a lot of people don't think about. It's not only trust in potential partners, but it's also trust in themselves. Another thing that happens when you experience abuse is that you might start questioning yourself, asking yourself, did I do something to cause it? Could I have prevented it somehow? So there's this constant questioning of yourself in the decision-making process with anything, and that definitely relates to dating. So bruises might heal. But it is the effects of emotional and psychological abuse that stay with you for a long time, even after the abuse stops. And there's no right or wrong way to feel trying to process what happened. The most important thing is to take your time to heal and move forward to break free from fear, shame, and stigma. I was giving a workshop for women. Now, this was way before... I did my flirt academies and I got this group together. We were just, you know, learning about dating and flirting. And there was this one particular woman, I'll never forget this. I tell the story a lot and she really stood out to me with her energy and I, I couldn't put my finger on it. So here she was, she was beautiful, successful. She was well-spoken, but then her body language, her outfit, her attitude read something completely different. And We as a group started doing some role playing and then we went to the bar, of course, as I always do, practice flirting and interacting with men. And it is then that I noticed that she started, you know, talking to men, but she would stand really far away. And then she had this kind of closed off body language. And then I noticed with her conservative style, she wore this pink turtleneck with slacks and a scarf wrapped around her. It was almost like a protective cocoon. And I pulled her aside and I told her about my observations around her body language and style. And I asked her if she had any awareness of it. And she was so surprised. She was so shocked that I picked up on something because she thought she hid her discomfort from getting close to men. She then proceeded to tell me in confidence that she was sexually abused when she was young and that she had done a ton of therapy but she didn't realize that her anxiety, her fears were leaking into her body language, even her style. And and that was impacting attraction. She was having a lot of trouble with first impressions in men. And she ended up hiring me, of course, after that. And because she had so much therapy, I did something really different with her. We determined that it was time to take action. In fact, I told her that talking therapy at this point, because she had so much of it, wasn't what she needed. She needed to practice feeling comfortable in her body, practice getting close to men, and most of all, trusting herself. And so we went shopping together, of course, and we bought her sexier clothes, and she could really start feeling comfortable 
in. And then we went out several times just exercising her flirt muscle. And I saw her transform in the way she felt in her body, going from this anxious, closed off, stiff energy to a more relaxed, open, and sexy one. And she finally felt comfortable going out on dates with confidence. She had met her goal of dating with confidence and allowing herself to receive finally from a man. Now, no matter what roadblocks or difficulties you might be experiencing, you can move beyond the trauma of abuse and enjoy a healthy lifestyle and relationships. And with me here is someone very special I met recently who has uh, an incredible story, who has transformed, oh my gosh, wait till you'll see his transformations because I have pictures. Um, he, he's done a complete transformation inside and out, and now he's here to inspire others to do so. After 20 years, he was a consultant providing strategic business solutions for companies in the U.S., Canada, and Europe. But in 2015, his life took a dramatic shift. He spoke at an event around the topic of childhood sexual abuse in his hometown, where his grade four and five elementary school teachers sexually assaulted him and many of his friends. And last year, he founded a nonprofit called Me Too What Now that raises awareness about sexual childhood abuse and mental health. And the organization's tagline, Find Yourself, Live Yourself, Give Yourself, reflects the path to discovering your identity and living your true authentic self. And he started creating a unique blend of videos on this topic, not readily found on the internet. In 18 months, he uploaded 43 videos to his Me Too What Now YouTube channel. And they've been viewed almost 6,000 times for a total of 16 thousand minutes. I love how he broke that down. I'm sure it's more than when he wrote this bio. He believes that doing the work to live your authentic self is how to find true fulfillment and lasting happiness. Welcome, Ed Squire. Kim, thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to it. Oh my God. I was so happy to have you on. And I really, like you really touched me. I We met at the New Media Summit with Steve Ulsher um, not too long ago. And I just remember you, like I, you, you were memorable, you know, like, I think we had just like a a fun little exchange, but there was something about your energy and this positivity that was radiating, radiating out of you. Like, I wanted to know who you were. And then I hear your story when you went on stage a little bit and it just, you have this amazing source. I'd love for you to talk about that in, in ways of how you got inspired to do all this. Oh, well, that's uh, and it's funny because I, I felt the same way when I met you, and I was trying to figure out who is this woman that relates dating to every topic that pretty much comes across <laughs> stage here. Somehow, I thought I thought I'd love to be on your show, but how do I? How am I going to get this topic into the dating world? And mm-hmm. I'm, there's there's it's uh, it's actually uh, ripe with uh, um, talking points about how to you know um, uh, how to how do you engage in a, in a healthy dating relationship after you've been through uh, not only trauma, but the, the type of trauma that I've been through, it's a, it's a real, it's a journey to get to find your authentic self, like which what we're talking about. But um, you know, my, my, my story is uh, I don't like to, you know, it, it's everybody's story is, 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 that, that creates trauma in their life is very personal to, to each person. And, and what, what, what traumatizes me uh, to, to what degree could be very different to how it traumatizes somebody else. Yeah. yeah. So I have great respect for people who like, sometimes someone will say, you know, well, that never happened to me. It was only like a one-time thing, but it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that my, mm-hmm. my situation caused more or less, uh, you know, um, trauma and dysfunction in your life. It's, it's, it's all how it affected you in, internally. And there's a lot of people that have a, a more uh, traumatizing story than I do. It's just my story, right? So, you know, in, in short, what happened was when I was four years old, I was sexually abused by my uh, step-grandfather. And that went that went on for uh, from about age four to age seven, when my grandmother and, and, and he were babysitting my sister and I. And then in uh, shortly after that, our next door neighbor, who was my father's uh, best friend's brother, uh, he began sexually abusing me. He was only about 16 years old at the time, and I was eight. Mm. And then in elementary school is where things got worse, and that's where the teacher that uh, you had mentioned uh, in my bio 
Uh, he sexually assaulted myself uh, for two years in grade four and five and many of my friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were, um, over the years, there's been a number of suicides <clears throat> related to that and just a, a lot of tragic stories in the personal lives of, of the people that I went to school with at that time. And for many years later, uh, young boys that I didn't know. And uh, I, 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 you know, I did what many people do and you, you just try to f- forget it or you try to move on. And especially yeah. when you get into high school and you realize what's happened to you and you begin to think, okay, um, how do I fit in? Where do I fit in? And, and I, I began, I didn't know at the time, but I was suffering from a lack of identity and self-confidence in who I was. And so I thought, oh, I want to be like the jocks over here. Or, or, oh, I would like to be like the smart people over here. Or I'd like to be like the party people over here. Just constantly trying to find a way to fit in and get people to like me is what it was. At, 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 at all costs. And I never knew what it meant to just, you know, live myself. And that's why my tagline is find yourself, live yourself, give yourself in mm. which, which to me, I've, I've kind of compacted the five stages of, of clinical recovery that psychologists and psychiatrists use into my own, into my own term. Uh, and um, it's been my journey uh, to, to, to get through that. And it's an ongoing uh, journey. And um, that's, that's what's brought me where I am today. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I think so many people have experienced something, you know, traumatic. And I think the more we are open and talk about it, you know, those feelings, because here's the thing too about abuse is that you, there's the sense of feeling alone, like you're, you know, and especially if there was some secret around it or you weren't allowed to tell anybody. And I think just by bringing it up to the surface and really like talking about it, just the sense of community that it can create, that you're not alone, that you can um, move on. And you're, you're, I, I got to talk about your transformation. And I think, you know, you said something really interesting just now. And now I totally get it. You said you were, you had this lack of identity and you were trying to see how you fit in. Like, tell me about these transformations. And was that kind of a way for you to, to form your identity? You know, it's, it's, it's been really a journey of, um, the best way to put it it's 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 been reactive all the way along right yeah. so my, all, all my life I've been you know now I get it now because I've been through you know uh, many years of therapy and I understand psychologically you know, you know and physically what it what happens behind uh, uh, these types of trauma and, and other types of trauma as well when you're when you experience trauma the 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 results of that can be very similar, whether it's sexual abuse or maybe you're a domestic uh, uh, violence or maybe you're a service member that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, was, was in the war. The, the reality is overcoming these things is very, very similar. And, and, and I think for, for me, the, the, the whole, the, the desire just to want to be uh, loved for who I was. Yeah. Right. And without having to perform, Mm. You know, to, to relax and just, just how do you just relax? Cause like, I mean, I got to this point in my career where I was earning a six figure income as a highly niche consultant doing, um, you know, uh, as, as a process, uh, uh, a business consultant for fortune 500 companies. And the reason I look back, the reason why I did it was because I wanted to get the attention of my father. I wanted him to, to look at me and say, I'm very proud of you. Look, look at what you've accomplished. Look at how, but the problem was he was also abused by the same man that abused me. Oh. So out of his brokenness, he couldn't be the father that, that, that I wanted to have or that I needed to have. Mm-hmm. And so he, when he died, um, it's only been about, I guess, about six years ago. You know, I, I, you know, I just finally came to the point where I realized he can't meet my needs as a father. right? And uh, I, need to, I need to find a way to... To, to discover who, you know, the, the value in my own self and, 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 and who, like, who am I? I'll never forget one time my therapist said, you know, she said, you just, you need to learn what it means to live in the moment. Mm. And I thought to myself, I live in the moment. I'm like, I'm like, rock on lady. I mean, I'm all about <laughs> it, right? Let's live in the moment. Let's, let's right. yeah. I had no idea that it meant just to, just to, 
value the time and every second and every minute that goes by in the, the environment that's around you and just be comfortable in that, knowing that you don't have to do anything, be anything, you just, just, you just exist in a moment. To me, that would have been like a really weird conversation, a uh, weird topic years ago, but not now. Now it means everything to me. And, um, and, and, and that's where I think even people that haven't been traumatized, but just the general public in, in a sense, are on a quest to, to, to find themselves in that peace and tranquility within themselves to be authentic and comfortable with who they are. Yes. Yeah. Well, really, the quest that you were finding, you, you know, is kind of the, the quest for love. But really, all along, it's the quest of self love, you know, because no matter, no matter, who, you know, who in your life hasn't been able to at least offer the love you were searching for, whether it's growing up, or, you know, from a parent, from a teacher, whatever it is, when you, when you love yourself, it's enough. Because before that, it's not enough, right? And so you're constantly on that search. And maybe that was part of your transformations that you were going through until you learned, yeah, you know what? If I can just slow down and be me, that, that's, that's good enough. That's right. That, is, that sounds so simple. And yeah. So yeah, that's so and hard. I know. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. So how did you move past all this pain and quest for love? And like, are there some tips that you would give people? on their journey to do this? Yeah, well, absolutely. Because like, I mean, it was, it's been a very, uh, you know, I look back and I've, I've journaled for many years uh, as I've gone through this. And, I, and, and that's actually one of the tips that I highly recommend to anybody is to, is to journal. And the way I, I, I journal then as I do now is I just, I just dump my thoughts onto uh, either electronically or handwritten. I, I do both. It depends on, on, on the moment. But I just, I just let whatever I'm feeling out on the paper or on, on my computer. And, mm-hmm. and no matter how good, bad, or ugly it is, it's just the truth about how I'm feeling about myself and my world or, and what I'm experiencing at the time, good, bad, or ugly. Because over time, as you, as you heal, when you, when you don't feel like you're making progress, and you wonder if you're ever going to get there, and you look back and you can see the progress that you did make. And, and, and that's been really encouraging um, in, in my transformation. I'm like, wow, I, I, I am way stronger than I used to be. And I'm, I, I understand the experience of the human, of the human experience, as they call it. I know what it means. You know what? Guess what? Everybody gets depressed. And I was like, really? Yeah. Every, everybody experiences um, these things to some degree. But when, you, when you're experiencing trauma or dysfunction, it could be at, a, at, a, at an elevated level. So journeying is one thing and just being real honest with how you feel, get it out there. Um, I love that. You know, it's funny that you said that because one of the exercises that I give people all the time, and it's something I require is, I mean, I have people journal too, but what you're saying, that piece of having a record is so crucial because you don't think you're making movement, right? And so I have people do an accomplishment chart, kind of like what you're saying, but in a form of like having their goals. And every time they meet their goals, they write down, you know, just an example of how they met that goal. And it is, it's such a powerful tool because most people don't see, or even the value of those little wins, how they add up to the bigger picture. I, li- I like what you said because that's that kind of ties into another another tip is uh-huh. is is giving yourself credit um, when you've accomplished something, no matter how little it is. Because depending on where you are in your journey, an accomplishment may be just getting out of bed on time, or maybe keeping your place clean, or maybe yeah. there's, there's so many different things. Or it could be maybe you accomplished a chapter in your book. It doesn't matter, but but to to reward yourself, and I found that so difficult, but. Because I wanted to get to a, I wanted to get to a healthy state in my life, and so I just got to the point where, when I accomplished something, no matter how big or little it was, I would just say out loud, "That's a vote, and uh, every vote counts." <laughs> right? I so love that. Yeah, like, that's cool. It's like in in politics, you know what? Your your vote counts, even though it may feel like it doesn't. And the the more votes you get, the stronger you become as you as you go along. So I uh, I have a whiteboard in my kitchen. And I just put I put a stroke, you know, one two three, and cross it off with five and, or four. One two three four, cross it off with five. And mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, I'm I am getting a lot of votes here. Meaning it may be getting exercise every day, or maybe eating healthy, or maybe whatever whatever 
whatever the, the, the steps that I've put down on paper to, to, for my goals, they count as votes, whether or not I feel like I'm succeeding or not. I look at this and go, wow, there's a lot of votes in my, in my favor here. I love that you're voting on yourself too. You're not relying on other people to vote for you, which is outside validation, which often happens when you're feeling lost. Right. You're actually validating yourself and saying, I win. I, I'm i voting for myself. And that's, I love, I, I, everybody should be doing that. Like, I want everyone to vote for themselves every <laughs> single day. I love this. Okay. You know, and you said, you, you talked about loving yourself, right? I hated that. Because I, I loathed myself all my life. I just, I hated myself with great intensity. And it, you know, it brought me to, you know, uh, uh, times of, of, of suicidal tendencies and just a, a lifestyle that was harmful to myself and harmful to others. And the more I did that, then the more I hated myself. And so now, you know, during my journey, as I, as I vote for myself, it could be votes for really things that or maybe shameful that I don't want to tell somebody, hey, guess what? I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't look at porn this week, right? Because porn mm. addiction was a was a problem for for me and, and, and like it is for many men. And that's another thing I'm not ashamed to talk about. Mm-hmm. Is, mm-hmm. And so that every day that would go by as I as I as I move towards sobriety in that area, right? I'm like, I wouldn't I don't want to tell anybody that, hey, guess what? I've not I haven't looked at porn for 60 days. Right. For me, I look at my, my little board in the kitchen. I go, oh, my God. I mean, I look at that and I go, how good do I feel now? Because I've voted for myself so many times. And, and um, so it, it's, it's uh, I have a question around that. Actually, I'm glad you brought up the addiction piece because that is something that's really um, – prevalent, you know, in ways of trying to fill yourself up to feel good, you know, when you're not really addressing the feelings, you're just, you know, almost um, using, it's almost like a drug, right? It could be any addiction. It could be like sex, it could be videos, it could be like anything. Did, Did you... And maybe this is another tip. Did you do something to replace that addiction? Absolutely. Uh, because yeah. like with any addiction, there's, there's a cycle that goes with addiction, right? There is, there's, 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 there's the, like the, the, it's like the preamble, I call it. You're, you're, as soon as you get the thought that I need a hit, I call uh-huh. it, whether it's alcohol or drugs or pornography. And for people that don't understand when it comes to pornography, it's, it's, you learn how to get your body to give you a shot of, of dopamine into your brain. And that's, that's, that's the hit that you're looking for that gives you temporary relief from whatever pain it is you're going through at the time uh, uh, mentally. That's what, that's what drugs and alcohol do. And, and, and so does work and so does gaming, right? They, they yep. provide dopamine. And so I had to be, I had to become aware of the cycle that, that, that surrounds addiction in general. Like what is causing me to trigger, to want to engage in pornography and then, and then understanding the shame that happens after it. And then there's this, there's this literal, you know, I was just so, so surprised to see that addiction had a very predictable pattern to it. So the next question was, well, how, how do you overcome addictions? And so I approached it the same way uh, I, that you would if you're a, an addict to any other substance. And that is you have to learn how to understand your triggers, understand your emotions, be aware in the moment of what's happening to you, be aware of your feelings. So some of the things I would do, and I still do today, um, even before I got on a call, I stop and I go, how are you feeling right now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, how do you feel? Mm-hmm. I go, well, uh, Actually, I'm feeling uh, anxious, or I'm feeling like this, or I'm feeling like I want to drink, or I'm feeling like I. You need to just be honest with your feelings. It doesn't mean you're going to act out on them, but just just be aware of them. And then you know you. And then don't be hard on yourself when you fall. That's another big thing too, because getting out of addiction, it's not going to happen overnight. You're going to get on the wagon, off the wagon, on the wagon, off the wagon, and that's a that's a part of the recovery process as well. So just learn to lighten up on yourself. So it's, it's understanding the process, understanding your feelings and how you feel in the moment, and then learning how to put new habits in place when you trigger, and then continuing in that pattern until you begin to get traction behind yourself. And then, then you feel powerful because you know, it no longer has a, a grip on you. Yes. I was just going to ask you, so what new habits did you use to replace that addiction? Well, a big thing for me was depression. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and isolation. Mm-hmm. And, and so I would always, that was, that was my go-to drug to try to just relieve myself of the, of the pain and the agony of, 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 of these things. But then, you know, I realized, okay, well, if, if, 
you know, why are you isolating? What do you, what, how can you change that? So I began to develop habits of getting outside of my house and, 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 and create friendships and realize that to be a friend, I had to, or to get friends, I had to be a friend. I didn't, I didn't have, I, I couldn't rely on people reaching out to me like, oh, poor Ed, are you isolating? Oh, let me be a friend to you. Well, nobody wants to be my friend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's, yes. that's what I'm known for. So I just learned how to just, you know, just take a step. And, and I, I would say, you know what, you get a vote. You just get out there and just get a vote. And that's what got me going with my T-shirts, which I, I'm going to have available online soon. I was hoping to have them before our oh, call. Oh, I love it. Yes. What I would do is when I felt depressed, I would wear, I got the, I custom made these T-shirts. One says, uh, it says, one kind word can change someone's entire day. And it's got a special little heart on it. And so people would look at my shirt and they, you know, I get positive responses from people. And another one, which is a saying from uh, the Dalai Lama, it says, um, be kind whenever possible. It is always possible. And so I got into this kindness kick. And, and so I just, I just practiced being kind to people and I couldn't mm -hmm. be depressed. And I looked forward to getting out of my uh, isolated environment and being you know, experiencing these positive uh, in situations wherever I went. I love that. And it's just, it goes along with what I was saying in the beginning is you put yourself into action. It wasn't just like thinking, oh, I'm depressed. I should be doing something else. <laughs> you know, the, the should be's will kill you. I think once you actually do some tangible things that, like you said, get out of the house, have a new social circle, wear a t-shirt, smile, um, you know, Anything that you can do physically in your body to move is going to actually, I feel, help you move past some of the stuff, but it, with, in a healthy way, rather than well, you know. And that's true. And the, and what I love about the T-shirts is that mm -hmm. it forced me because I would forget that I had it on, and I'll never forget. One lady said to me, she was a barista. She looked at me and she goes, "Well," she goes, "What's my word?" And I looked at her because I was caught in, I was all in my head and you mm -hmm. know, very in, I was in, you know, just very inwardly focused and depressed. <laughs> I looked at her, I was like, what? She goes, your word, your t-shirt says that one kind word is going to change my entire day. What's my, what you got to, oh. what's my word? And I looked at her, I went, oh, it's, I just snapped out of my internal, <laughs> internally focused, depressed state of mind. And I just, I just beamed because I'm like, oh my God, she's responding to my shirt. That's awesome. And, and so I had to engage with this human mm -hmm. being. I looked at her and I wanted to be sincere. And I was, and I looked at her and I said, you know what? I said, you look, that, that outfit looks stunning on you. You just look fantastic today. And, and I smiled when I said it because I felt great. And she looked at me and she, oh my God, she goes, well, thank you so much. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, that, that changed my entire day. That's awesome. And I love that, like that, it was almost like a prop, if you will, or that costume allowed you to have that confidence to interact. You know, I've been doing these flirt academies all over and I'm just going to give a, reveal a little secret. I do, I have these flirt gag bags that I give people and inside the bags, there are these cat ears because the, right and, and it's kind of like the t-shirt where when the women would put on the cat ears suddenly it gave them confidence because guys would like interact with them with the cat ears and like oh I like your ears you know and suddenly it just gave them permission then to you know have this kind of sexy cat ear attitude and also engage in conversation so I think props are actually really really effective in that so that's that's awesome well, you know, I call that tools. Like you, need, yeah. you need to have tools in your toolbox that work for you. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, and, and, and be, and be and, you know, the other tip that goes along, so we mentioned journaling. We talked about, um, um, under, like, understanding the, the, the cycle of, of depression and, and addiction and, and, and then doing something. Um, but getting grounded and being mindful is, 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 the, is, an, wow. is another, another tool like, that goes along with that, whether they're physical tools or they're, they're, they're you know, um, uh, psychological tools, it helps. And, and being grounded and mindful, I just, that confused me for so long, but now I, I get it. Mm -hmm. and, and it just means just being aware of your surroundings and being in the moment and, and, and not, you know, thinking outwardly instead of thinking inwardly is, is, is kind of the way, the way I put it. And, 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 awesome. and just be aware that, that it's okay to blow it. And you know what? It's okay to blow it who cares how long? 
It does this, forget the time limit, right? Just take a step today, take a step in the moment right now. And that's, that's where you, then you get your vote, right? So that's the other tips, taking votes and, and just don't be hard on yourself for, you know what, you're going to fail your ass off along the way. It's just going to be part of the process, but know that, Hey, that's part of the process, but you know what, as I'm failing, I got votes. I never had votes before. (laughs) because you voted for yourself and you are enough. That's That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So I have one last question. And I mean, I have so many questions, but this relates to just your own experience. Like how, how have you used kind of these tools to help you with your journey and all the transformation that you've gone through with your relationships in your life? Yeah, I was wondering if we were going to talk about that. Of course, I'm not going to let you get away. We're not going to end this podcast without you talking about oh, that. God. So, you know, all my life, I've I'm I'm high functioning, which means I can look like everything's fine on the outside. Hmm. And um, you know, when I when I got into the recovery process, you know, this is about I mean, I officially hit rock bottom in 2012. And you know, I started recovery really around that time. And, and um, I, I dated a few times, but there was no question that, I mean, I was not myself uh, with, uh, with these women, right? There, was, there were pretty much two women that I dated, but I just, I was never, just never comfortable with being myself. I was always finding myself adjusting in social settings or adjusting in when we were in, in personal settings, just always making these adjustments and constantly being on edge. And um uh, you know, actually, B- Brene Brown's biggest t- TED talk that she ever did really hit home for me. And I, the I, vulnerability. I remember, yes, yeah. yes. No, she's like she's just a fantastic. Like it's one of the it's one of the most viewed TED talks that that, that, is, that is up that is out there. And so, it's just a, a couple of years ago, I I met someone. And I was at a really great place in, in my recovery, and just just like I am right now. But I, I know back then, even two years ago, like today, oh, there's still things I'm working on. There's still, you know, sometimes I'm like, hmm, that wasn't really you. Like, what was that? Like, where did where did that come from? <laughs> or maybe I told something that wasn't true, and I think about what what do you why did you do, what do you do? you don't need to perform? You don't need to put on a show, right? You don't need so I'm just constantly making adjustments to my own authenticity to not try to impress anybody and just just to be myself and so you know I was very fortunate to meet somebody who you know nobody has it all together but she had you know she's got a lot of it together on the mental health side Mm. and and we we started dating and and everything was just fantastic and then and then I, I I was triggered and I slipped into an old pattern of where I felt I felt uh, I need to perform here. Like I felt insecure all of a sudden. So mm-hmm. I started saying things that were this weird, like to try to build myself up. And she said to me, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever it is you're doing, it's not going to impress me. And as a matter of fact, take it somewhere else and go and impress somebody else. Wow. She called you out. Big time. And and I, I, I mean, I just, I've never had somebody call me out on that. And Usually I can lie around it or I can fake my way around it or just, you know, call BS on whatever it is they think they're thinking about me. But I couldn't do that. I was like, oh, my God. And then and then I you know I kind of tried to do that. And then I ended up lying about something really stupid. And she just said to me, she just straight in the face. She goes, I don't believe you. You're lying. And I tried to do like I usually do. And, you know, I can be very convincing. And mm. she was not buying it. And so we were on again and off again, and uh, it caused me to really, uh, really think about, okay, what, what am I doing here? How can I get to the next level of, of, of mental health? And, um, and um, you, know, how, how, what, you know, how did, like, what did, it was, <laughs> it was painful, but it was great. Because you know what, like, one of my favorite things to say is if it's impossible to live authentically until you learn how to live in the moment. And that means grasping what's going on and understanding it. And so, um, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we've been on again, off again for a couple of years and uh, she's a wonderful uh, woman that really understands me, but does not give me any slack. Right. Mm. In, but in, in a healthy, in a healthy way. Right. right, right. Just, just does not, does, does not go for unhealthy 
um, you know, unhealthy activities in, in, in our relationship. He's either all real or no, thank you. I'm like, that's exactly what I want in my life. So if she, you know, if, uh, you know, she has had every right to, to dump me and leave me. And, and if she did, uh, she would have every right to, and I'm okay with that now. And uh, yeah, but it's, it's, you know, when I, when I finally got into a relationship and, 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 and approached it from wanting to be authentic all the way and finding out that, Hmm, I still got some work to do here. There's still something in me that is still a little bit broken and wanting to um, uh, be dysfunctional for some reason. So she has been a great form of, and it could go one of two ways, right? I could just go mm-hmm. into performance orientation to try to keep her, or I could go, okay, Ed, uh, you know, you can look in the mirror and you need to see what she's seeing. And if she's not seeing it, you know, if she's seeing something that maybe she's out of whack, but that could be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but. Well, here's, a, here's, I have a question though, and then we'll kind of wrap up. Have you been open about your past and has she been kind of, you know, willing to be there for you to work on that? Well, what I was, you know, when we first met, what I was, what I was really grateful for was, and this is only a couple of years ago. And, and, um, you know, I've been, I've been very open about my past and, mm-hmm. and opening up about, I'm just, I'm just not ashamed to tell whatever I need to tell to the appropriate audience or person, right? Mm-hmm. So I have, I have nothing to hide. I am ashamed of nothing. And even for the things that I've done that, that were done to me, that were, you know, that, that were developed most likely because of what was done to me, um, you know, I, I forgive myself, right? I love myself and I'm not ashamed. So she, you know, I said to her, you know what, when we first started dating, um, she knew about me because uh, mm-hmm. a, 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 a mutual friend uh, kind of introduced us. So she knew about me. And because she's very sharp, she's a very sharp professional. She said, you know, I'd like, you know, I can't remember how it went exactly. But I, I basically said, you know, what? you can ask me anything you want. Ask me anything. Well, she did. We, she would go from one question to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And it really challenged me in those first few months um, to, to, wow, this is amazing to have this opportunity to not be ashamed, but to really tell the truth, not embellish it, not kind of this, you know, shave it off a little bit here and, you know, make it up here or whatever, but just to really be honest. And so, yeah, I, I did go through that. And I recommend in relationships that that's, that's what, that's what you do. Absolutely. You know, ask well, that, questions. And yes. And to communicate about it because then there's a, there's a different kind of understanding rather than assuming and predicting what the other person might be feeling or, you know, as long as you're open about it, I think there's also a different level of understanding. So that's awesome. Maybe we'll have you back on as a coaching guy to see if I can help you through this um, relationship. So that's stay tuned. That would be awesome. <laughs> that, that would be awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. So w- tell everybody where they can find you. Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, all over social media, but my two, uh, you know, my, my favorites are uh, my, my YouTube channel. And uh, you can, uh, you can either put, put in my name, Ed Squire, or you can put in me too, what now, all one word, and it'll take you right there. But even if you just Google my name, um, uh, I'm all over everywhere. But, but my main, my main source is my YouTube channel and, uh, and Instagram. Is where I where I spend time, but you know I still I spend time on Twitter and uh, and on my uh, Facebook uh, account as well. And and the thing is for me is that, that what I'm what I'm my goal is what, what drives me doing this more than anything is connecting with people. Mm-hmm. So um, you know I don't I don't I don't just like you know dump the same information across all my channels and and, and I have nothing to, for sale. Uh, but but I, I I look forward to people reaching out to me uh, directly. So you can DM me, you can email me, uh, you know, any way you want to reach out in a personal way. That's that's really the 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 the, the core of, of of what I'm doing. And I, and I spend a lot of time uh, in conversation with people uh, that are asking me questions about my journey and and uh, and their journey and and. Uh, but and my awesome. and my website, which is you know uh, me too what now dot com again, it's all one word, uh, and that will uh, provide links and information to everything that I'm doing. Great, great. Well, I know you don't need my vote because you already have enough of your own, but I'm totally <laughs> voting for you. So you can put another strike up there, <laughs> just so well, you know, you. <laughs> from me. And again, thanks so much for joining me today and sharing your story and the vulnerability. This has been the Charisma Quotient, and I'm your host, of course, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, seltzerstyle.com. And if you want to learn how to move beyond 
beyond the fears and transform your life by putting yourself into action, no matter what you have been through. Hop on a free breakthrough call with me. I promise I'll help you get there. I'll map out a plan. And there'll be a you know link in the show description as always so that you can schedule that. And stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day. Oh.